today, there are a growing number of reports that record number of people in Muslim countries are placing their faith in Jesus as a result of Jesus appearing to them in a dream or vision. I've invited three special guests to tell us what is happening. First, you'll meet Kamal Salim, a former Muslim terrorist born in Lebanon. He was recruited at age seven by the Muslim Brotherhood, worked with Yasser Arafat and the PLO, trained international terrorists under Muammar Gaddafi in the deserts of Libya, and fought with the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Later, the Muslim Brotherhood sent him to the United States to recruit Americans for their terror organizations. But a car accident resulted in his seeing the unconditional love of Christians who took care of his medical needs and forced him to reevaluate everything he'd ever been taught about Islam. And this led him to place his faith in Jesus and Jesus totally changed his life. My second guest is Tom Doyle, who has worked in the Middle East for 18 years and met a staggering number of Muslims who were first introduced to Jesus through a vision or dream so powerful, they eventually turned from their lifelong religion of Islam to embrace Jesus Christ as their savior. He has recorded these stories in his book, Dreams and Visions, Is Jesus Awakening the Muslim World? My third guest is a real American hero. He is retired three-star general William G. Boykin, former commander of Delta Force, who later became commanding general of all U.S. Special Army forces around the world. He also served at the CIA in clandestine missions, and for four years he served as Deputy Undersecretary of Defense. He is now the Senior Vice President at the Family Research Council. Today, you will hear how the Muslim Brotherhood is infiltrating many of our American institutions. But more importantly, you will learn what happens when many people in Muslim countries are meeting Jesus for the very first time on this edition of The John Ankerberg Show. Welcome to our program. We have three fascinating guests here. We've got General Boykin, we've got Kamal Salim, we've got Tom Doyle. And we're talking about what God is doing and calling people to himself in a place you, didn't, you wouldn't think that he would be working. He's working in the Muslim countries. And he is giving dream experiences, real visions, and real experiences of Jesus showing up to Muslims across the world. This video would be about yet another fake ex-Muslim. Uh, this ex-Muslim goes by the name of Kamal Salim. He's a self-proclaimed former jihadi PLO member. He's been touring and lecturing in universities, churches, college campuses, along with Walid Shubat, Walid Shaibat. So, without further ado, let's see Mr. Kamel Salim introducing himself. But I want to introduce uh, Brother Kamal Salim. Thanks so much for being here, Brother Kamal. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on your show, and thank you for this show is salt and light tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Well, My story is not different from many other people who are not rich people. I was born in Beirut, Lebanon, you know, to Muslim Sunni family, and we were 14 brothers and sisters in three-room house. And mm -hmm. uh, by the age of 10, I recited the Quran three times, you know. Oh, from man. End Hafiz. End. Hafiz. Yes, oh. and I come to Hafiz. Hafiz oh, al The good thing is, I, you know, I studied in Azhar Sharif in Beirut. Uh, you know, I studied in Azhar Sharif in Beirut. Uh, Did you hear that, Muslims? You know, I studied in Azhar Sharif in Beirut. Uh, you know, I studied in Azhar Sharif in Beirut. Uh, Did you hear that, Muslims? The only Azhar Sharif university that I, that I know of is in Cairo, Egypt. It's in Cairo, Egypt. But what made Kamal convert to Christianity? I uh, called on uh, Allah one day and Allah didn't answer. And uh, when I called on God of Father Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, uh, God of heaven and earth answered and I gave my life. So um, Arab Christians stopped calling on Allah because apparently he would not answer. Try calling upon Jesus. But if Jesus doesn't answer, then try another God and try, keep trying, keep trying until someone answers you, okay?
And everything that Muhammad said according to the hadith will be manifesting. That the day will come about where every door in the world will be knocked on by the sword and not one door will be left behind. Bukhari wa Muslim. Sahih al Khamis. The fifth Sahih by Bukhari Muslim. In the 300, in the 300 series. For those who are taking notes. Did you hear that, Muslims? Bukhari wa Muslim. Sahih al Khamis. The fifth Sahih by Bukhari Muslim. In the 300, in the 300 series. For those who are taking notes. For those who took notes, if you find this hadith or uh, the book, of that hadith, send me a message please. Thank you. So when we say hadith is the life and the saying of Muhammad, but yeah. what he was saying with this, he said, mm -hmm. Teach your children how to surprise the enemy, mm -hmm. how to ride, you know, and you know, and riding is basically you know, like what they did in 9-11, yeah. you know, or how to ride any mechanical, you know, uh, things to use against the enemy, and also the shoot of, shooting of the weapon. And finally is the language of your enemies. By doing so, you raise your children to be an armies. And then uh, she never failed uh, to share with me uh, and all my brothers, you know, the hadith uh, by Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. And it says, This is from Sahih Bukhari. My father taught about martyrism. <laughs> He said, everybody, every Muslim will have to pass by hell first. There at the Tabli, as we sat down, I was reciting the book with my mom, and she was teaching from Surah Zilzula. Which is the earthquake. And it says, after reading the Quran reciting after my mother in Madrasa and it says we read from the Surah Al Kawsar And it says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ My family was jihadist, fundamentalist, Muslim. As a matter of fact, we had over 14 imam in my family. One of my cousin, he was the grand imam, the holy of holy of Islam. The highest rank. Excellent. Praise God. Just before we go to the callers, Brother Kamal, I want your help with a verse in the Quran. Because you are a native Arabic speaker. Surah al maryam Surah 19, verse 71. Now, here in, in English, he says, not one of you but will pass over it. But in the Arabic, uh, did you hear that, Muslims? The Independence Mayor is under fire for the speaker he asked to the annual Mayor's Prayer Breakfast tomorrow. Critics say the speaker will be given a pulpit to preach hate. Amy Holly has that story. Kamal Salim, a well-known self-proclaimed ex-terrorist who once followed the Muslim faith, converted to Christianity years ago. The mayor says Salim will bring a story of redemption to independence tomorrow, but critics claim it's really a story that's fabricated.
Is, is. Mayor Don Rimel says he's going to say a prayer before tomorrow's traditional prayer breakfast. Several groups, an anti-defamation civil rights group, interfaith groups, and individuals have all asked him to reconsider his keynote speaker and plan to protest his choice. So far, none of this has changed his mind. What I'm hoping is that when they hear his message, their fears will be... Uh, dissolved. Kamal Salim has been publicly speaking of his religious conversion for 10 years. He tells groups he was raised to hate Christians and Jews, but after a near fatal car accident, he became a devout Christian. The mayor has heard from supporters from all over the world saying his message is a powerful one. And all I want is his testimony. Uh, if he has a story to tell about other things uh, to do with the uh, Islamic religion, that's a, a story for another place and another time. This independence man believes differently. He says the man fabricated his story for money and preaches an anti-Muslim message. Be an Islamophobe for the most part. Person who bashes Islam, bashes Muslims in general with a broad brush. This Muslim civil rights group called CARE says he's also even fabricated his own name. Salim has spoken to universities, churches and military academies. Still, critics here believe it's less a message about finding Christ and more about preaching that the world will soon see a radical Islam invasion. Now, keep in mind, none of the people we talked to has ever talked to Salim or heard him in person. So, the question still remains. Is it a Christian message that's being labeled as hate speech by people who don't believe the same way as Salim does? Or is it a man who uses the Christian message as a veil for an anti-Muslim agenda? 600 people will decide tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. at the Community of Christ Auditorium. Amy Holly, NBC Action News. There's a guy named Kamal Salim, and he gives speeches to right-wing groups and government groups, etc., claiming that he is an ex-terrorist. But thank God he's found the way, he's found the light, and he goes and speaks to these groups, like the Values Voter Summit that just happened. He spoke there. Here, let me give you a sample of what he said. Here, let's go to clip one. My grandfather came from the Ottoman Empire when it fell in 1924 as a general. He earned his scars by the sword of Islam. And when he had my mom, I was born to a Muslim mother who is Zalat. I was trained, and she told me from my childhood, my son, you will die for the sake of Allah. And when you kill Jews and Christians, Allah will celebrate your glory, and your hands will light up before the throne of Allah. I was a young lad. I dreamt about killing Jews and Christians. This is my dream as a child. Mm, that is a powerful story. And it got the crowd revved up. They were, look at this ex-terrorist. You see that? We knew it. We knew all these Muslims were trained at birth to kill Christians and Jews. In fact, he also said, I came to destroy this country as a terrorist. Funny that the FBI hasn't talked to him. But anyway, he's had speaking engagements in not just the Values Voter Summit, but at the state capitals throughout the country, at the Air Force Academy, and at colleges and churches all across the country. And he has an amazing tale to tell. Do you know that he says he's worked for Yasser Arafat, the PLO, Muammar Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, and the Mujahideen in Afghanistan? And by the way, as you're about to see here in clip number two, he was also indoctrinated by the Muslim Brotherhood. We came, I was recruited in the mosque at young age as many children start attending the mosque in the neighborhood by the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood came to history in 1928. I was indoctrinated by them in the mosque. That was my college study. We were taught how to infiltrate civilization and become part of nations and change the nations from inside. How to marry your daughters and obtain the citizenship. How to join your military and become member of your military so we can get the citizenship. How to become chaplain and spy on this nation and give it to our brotherhood. And how to become part of this world and come across the borders to infiltrate your very civilization today. This is in a nutshell. So, Kansas City Star sees this, and they're like, wait, 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 let me get this right. Muslim Brotherhood, Arafat, Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, is there anybody you didn't mention? And they called him, quote, the Forrest Gump of the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> so now, this guy it continues with his amazing tales. 
In fact, he's got one that involves curious sounds and a sad story about a young man uh, that got killed and how proud his mom was that he was killed. Because, you know, it's all Muslims. It's in their culture. That's the story he's really trying to bring to these right-wing voters. Watch. My first master was Yasser Arafat. My first mission was very, very good. You see, the Jews didn't think that children can do such a thing. We took advantage of them. The second journey, I was eight, I was a recruiter. I recruited my next door neighbor, Muhammad. And I told his mom, I'll bring him back home alive. I made a promise. But that day it was, they were waiting for us. This is when the blood of children and blood of lamb was mixed together as we're trying to rendezvous with the shepherd so they can put these belts on the, top, on the belly of the sheep and take them inside Israel to give them to Fida'iyin, which is the martyrs. That day, they shot us with everything. Muhammad took shrapnel through his esophagus and he fell down to the ground. I carried him and I'm crying, how I'm going to tell his mom? And I was crying, Mama. That day, Muhammad went to a different place. You see, when his mom talked to me, she said, where is Muhammad? You promised he'll be back. I said, he is with Allah. He's celebrating in the host of heaven. Now you can go to paradise without judgment because he became a forgiven like a messiah to you. And I said now he's being wed by Allah with 72 versions and with every version he has 72 other versions. Muhammad is in good place, Fatima. She put her hand to her lips and shouted with a shout of wedding feast. She celebrated her son wedding into the heavens. <laughs> this guy is a colorful character, man. And he's giving them the show that they want. Oh, yeah, Muslims with their weird little calls and stuff. And yeah, they were so ecstatic when their kid died. By the way, this guy also sounds like Father Sarducci from Saturday Night Live. And then you need two or three miracles. And I tell her, your son has a 72 of virgins. But why would a mom care about that? <laughs> okay. So, if you notice, he said in his second mission, he was eight years old. According to his accounts, in his first mission, when he was running the guns on the sheeps, I'm not kidding, that's what he says, he was seven years old. Who would be so colossally stupid as to believe this? Well, of course, not the authorities. In 2007, for example, in Chino Hills, California, he said that Muslim agents had broken into his Holiday Inn and ransacked the place. Oh, the Muslim Brotherhood's on his tail. When the uh, cops were asked about it, quote, local law enforcement, however, has no record of any such incident. Yeah. Fail. And then in 2007, again, he's speaking at uh, Michigan's Calvin College. Another professor, Doug Howard, professor of Middle Eastern history, notices that he's saying really weird things. And in the middle of his speech, he says that he was a descendant of, quote, the Grand Wazir of Islam. Here's the only problem. There is no such thing. <laughs> That's an awesome fail. He just made it up. He's like, it sounds kind of like wizard, you know? And other things. Oh, la, 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 la. I, the Grand Wazir of Islam. And Doug Howard's like, wait a minute, there's no such thing. What the hell's going on here? This guy is unreal. So, in fact, literally, it turns out his real name is Kodor Shami. That Kalam name, he just made it up. It's Kodor Shami. And in fact, who did he work for for 10 years before we, he came out as an ex-terrorist? Pat Robertson's Christian Broadcasting Network and James Dobson's Focus on the Family. Hmm. <laughs> Gee, I wonder where he got all these ideas. Can't quite tell. Come on, come on. Even though that's not actually his name. All right. Now, uh, he says that he speaks at the FBI all the time and the FBI is communicating because people say, hey, wait a minute, my God, if you were this mastermind terrorist, why isn't the FBI talking to you? Well, he said, oh, yeah, all the time. So they asked uh, FBI spokesperson Kathleen Wright. She said, quote, no information that Kamal Salim has spoken at an FBI-sponsored event. Cannot say definitively whether the Bureau had ever been in contact with him. And... I love this line by Dawood Wali, he's the, uh, one of the guys from the Council on American Islamic Relations, obviously they realize that this guy's a scam artist. He said, quote, the FBI or the Department of Homeland Security, don't let people who are terrorists into the country 
and not detain them just because they claim they got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> there I had a vision at his feet three weeks ago. And the Lord has given me a house that's set on a rocky mountain. And a house shifted between the earth and the heaven. And it kept shifting up and down. And there on the terrace sat my wife, my daughter and myself. And we were praising Him. We can see from high places and we can see from low places. There in that place, all of a sudden we were in a high in the summit. There in the summit, as I was sitting there, I heard a cry from the earth. And it was a female eagle. And she travailed with a loud voice. And she went, ee, ee, ee. She cried with a shout. And out of the sphere of the earth, the Lord has given me a vision. And there was a great Amari eagle. He was surveying the earth and he was looking all over. And he was mighty in gesture, glorious in power. And as he looked there, he heard the female eagle that she cried from the earth. And he answered with a loud voice. And he fell head on and he was breaking the sound of the earth. 